I'd like to welcome Mr. Khaled Lahashmi from the Ministry of Communication and Technology, who's going to open the session for us. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, I'm always impressed by the progression in QU. Unfortunately, I'm not a student of QU. Unfortunately. Fortunately, all my associates at the ministry, most of them are QU graduates. So that's why I consider myself a virtual student of QU. Now, my speech is for 10 minutes, and I'll try to set the stage what's coming after my speech, because we will have interesting panel discussions, we will have industry, we will have technology providers, we have researchers also participating in the panel discussions. This speech was supposed to be given by Dr. Hissa. She wrote this speech. It was very inspirational. When I read this speech, I was anxious that I will not do justice to the speech. So I decided to leave it for Dr. Hissa. Hopefully, next time, she'll be able to deliver that inspirational speech. So I will probably do my style over here. <laughs> Since I'm not the minister, so I can do anything I want. <laughs> I will ask you to close your eyes. Please do this for 10 seconds. And imagine driving from the Corniche to QU. In 10 seconds, imagine driving from the Corniche to QU. What do you see while you're driving from the Corniche to QU? 10 seconds, please close your eyes. OK, open your eyes. What did you see, or what do you see when you drive from Corniche to QU? What exactly you see? That's a question for the students of QU. Traffic, yes. What else? Buildings, labels, road signs, infrastructure, صح? trees, palm trees. What else? People, annoyed people, <laughs> cars. This is the physical structure of a city. Hmm? It's a physical structure. You see buildings. You see roads, you see car, people. It's a physical structure of a city. Now, when you notice what's happening on the roads, lots of cars. Cars are like packets, information packets. They're trying to leave a destination and get to, sorry, leave a source and get to a destination. Sah? Sah. And when you look at the destinations, the buildings, banks, ministries, probably military installations, hmm? research centers, universities. When you look at those installations or structures, some of them are very open. You can walk in. Some of them have those metal bars. Some of them have guards. Some of them have fences, CCTV. Yes? Do you have CCTV in QU? Of course you have. And when you walk in those structures or those buildings, they will give you an access card because there are zones that you're not allowed to enter due to privacy, confidentiality, and all those elements. True? OK. Take this to a cyber environment. All this, what I have said, take it to a cyber environment. What exactly is over there? Similar stuff. Information assets preserved on servers. Now everything is virtualized. You don't know where the information is preserved. But you have access to it. Why? Because someone gave you an access card. The theme, I think, of my speech is thwart. Hmm? And this is a new English word I learned yesterday because I was Googling the meaning of thwart, which is very intelligent, really. I mean, I did my exercise to understand the term 
and I Google it, it's basically mitigation or opposing or controlling a threat. The state of Qatar journey, and still we are in this journey together to control or mitigate threats for the state of Qatar or against the state of Qatar, established or created a national strategy. I know there is lots of talk about strategies. And there should be a question, there should be a question about strategy. Are they effective or not effective? You know, you did a quiz earlier. There should be a question about that. In my view, strategy is always effective. It's about the people who are responsible of implementing those strategies. State of Qatar journey was in 2014 to create or announce a national strategy. What is a national strategy? Who participated in developing or creating the strategy? Everyone. When I say everyone, everyone representing you. So there were members from energy sector. There were members from academia. There were members from the government sector. Even we used students to read and review the strategy. So it was a joint exercise meaning the strategy is not only for ICT Qatar or for X and Y Z organization, it's a Qatari strategy. All of you participated through your representatives. And in the strategy, we agreed on five pillars that will help us to mitigate a cyber disruption. I will not use the word attack. Cyber disruption. It's basically safeguarding Critical information infrastructure, that was number one. Number two, uh, Mustafa, you can... Uh, <laughs> Mustafa was, uh, he's from Uridus, so he was part of the team who helped us in creating this strategy. So if I lose anything, just let me know. <laughs> so safeguarding critical information infrastructure was number one. Incident management nationwide was number two. Regulatory framework was number three. Creating a culture, cultivating a culture of cybersecurity was number four, and then building capacity was number five. And, and most of us are here for the building capacity because it will involve research. Safeguarding critical infrastructures, again, if you imagine the physical structures I mentioned earlier, why we have fenced structures, why we have CCTVs in some structure, why we have access control, because what they host from inside, what is inside those structures. Banks are always well protected, why? Because they have our money. That's why we are, they're well protected. So if you, in a cyber environment, classify your assets and identify that this asset is very critical to you and to your well-being and to your continuity, you should apply the proper controls to protect it. In a cyber world, simple, simple. Incident management, again, simple things you have to do in your organizations. As a nation, we're trying to work with you. What is incident management? When a disruption happens in your organization, what is the correct response activity to mitigate this incident? Think of it. The incident happened. The first thing you need to do is, of course, you should have a team that will be able to detect, mitigate, eradicate, recover. So if you have all these four processes applied in your organization, you will be able to mitigate an incident instantly. That's number two, number two element of the strategy. Number three, regulatory framework. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that we need to have lots of regulations. We need to have balanced regulation. Probably there will be a question about cybercrime, which I will not answer. <laughs> but, you know, we should have balanced regulation. Balanced regulation is not about laws only. You need to have policies, you need to have guidelines, you need to have standards. Why someone wearing a badge like this is supposed to only enter zone number three and cannot enter zone number four? How can you control that individual to enter zone number three but not zone number four? By having some guidelines. Why? Because this guy is not allowed to access information or assets in zone number four. Simple. 
So who's responsible for that guidelines? You, your organizations. The nation will probably have laws at a national level. So that's a regulatory framework, balanced regulatory framework, constantly updated, contemporary, addresses real issues. Number four, we talked about the three elements. Number four, it's very important. It starts from here, institution like this, education, education, and education. I had an interesting session with my colleagues from the Kindy Lab yesterday here in this building. And some of them all are here and they're sharing smiles with me. Thank you. <laughs> and we talked about education. What is our institutions or what is our schools are doing when it comes to education? Recently we launched an initiative with Supreme Council of Education called Haseen. Haseen means basically protection. But is that enough? I don't think it's enough. We need to do more. And I will leave it for the universities to address that question or address this element of education. Are we doing enough in our universities to educate our students? Why not start an initiative in QU, the most safest campus regionally? It starts from QU. Why not? It's easy. You have critical mass, and you have a pool of resources to do things like this. Let us learn from you. Number five, research. In the breakfast session, I did not respond, but there was interesting dialogue between industry and, I'll say, technology providers or researchers. It was about duplication. And I agree, the word duplication is not doing justice to the research centers we have in Doha. I don't think it's duplication. I think it's complementing each other. We have good professors, we have good scientists distributed among the research centers here in Qatar, and they're all working towards the same objective, which is securing, securing energy, securing water, securing cyber. However, probably the methodologies are different because they come from different school of thoughts. So they are complementing each other. What is missing probably a platform to exchange, and I think QSTP QSTP is not. QSTP can address that. QSTP can be the platform of exchange. So everybody's pouring to QSTP. QSTP is transforming that to a product, a commodity, because the companies are hosted in QSTP. And this is the end of my speech. <laughs> Thank you all. <laughs>